Hey, in this video, I'd like to do uh, one of these IPO calculators. We'll do like an average calculator, ask the user for some numbers, tell them the average of those numbers. Hooray! Okay, so new folder, we'll call this, yeah, average calc. Um, once again, we want to go into that folder, open up our command prompt, so CMD in here. Enter, there it is, oh, there it is. Okay, and uh, what was it, .NET, oops, .NET new console that sets up what we need to do for that and then we'll do code dot to open up vs code okay let's get the console and that side by side maybe zoom in on here a bit program.cs yes we want those assets thank you c sharp extension okay and this is going to be my average Calculator by Mr. V. I will do that nullable disable again so that when we do our read lines, it doesn't give us the warning. And we want to set up, uh, let's zoom in a bit here. We want to set up our input process output. Okay, and, and maybe a little welcome. All right, we do our, yeah, sure, our welk, welcome. So in the welcome, we'll do our console.clear, and then just a console.writeLine, uh, welcome to the average calculator. Always nice to be welcoming. Okay, um, and then in the input section, what do we want to do here? We want to output a message, so we'll just do a write, where we'll say enter first number, and we'll leave a space for that. And this time what we want here, sorry, I just realized why is it that giving me some more space because I don't need that much space for that. Okay, good enough. All right, um, and remember we need to store this in a variable. This time it's a number, so I have some options here. Let's start with um, int. I'm just gonna call it num1. Okay, and we get an error message. And if you hover over the error message, this red line, yellow is a warning, red is error. It says, okay, so this this write returns a, is a string thing, cannot ex implicitly convert type void to int. And, oh, what am I doing? Sorry, wake up. Um, this is our write line. We need, hello, we need, I hit the home key. We need to do our int num1 is assigned console.read line. That's what we want to do. And it should still give me an error. That's what I was expecting. So this read line, <coughs> excuse me, it returns the next line of characters or null if no more lines are available. And type string to int, right? Because the read line will return a string. We're trying to save it in a variable that is supposed to be an integer, um, a system.int32 integer. So in order to do that, we can convert this string. There is a convert dot um, to int32 is what we want. That's kind of the, the standard one. And we need our brackets and our brackets around this. So it'll take whatever we read from the user input, pass it into this convert function, which will convert it to an integer. And then it's happy and it'll save it in that variable. Okay. And we'll copy and paste that because we'll do maybe three numbers. Enter second number, enter third number, num two and num three. And that is our input, right? We write out the message and then we do a read line to get the input, convert it to an integer, save it in a variable, and then repeat that for three numbers. Okay, in the process, we're going to have a variable called average. Again, I want it to be an integer. Ooh, unless it's not going to be an integer. Oh, no. Right, depending on what my values are. Let, let's just try this and see what happens. So basic math operations are in C sharp, right? Addition, multiplication, subtraction, division, remainder, modulus, or whatever. Um, if I remember correctly, star star isn't a thing in um, C sharp. Um, for exponents, you have to do math dot pow for power, and it kind of explains what it does in here. Um, anyway, yeah, this this math object you can use lots of stuff. It's got square root in it if you want. 
It's got all the trig stuff, sign, etc. So anyway, we're going to do a bracket. So we can do order of operations, and we'll just go num1 plus num2 plus num3, and then divide by 3. And all right, well, it's not going to be an error, so we'll see what happens. And then in my output, we do our console.write line. And I can just do one of those beautiful, uh, I figured the name of them again, string template, something like that. And let's actually do this. Let's go num1. Uh, no, forget it. We'll just write the average is, and then do our brace, and then put that variable inside of there. Okay, let's see what happens. <clears throat> so to run the program, .NET run should clear the screen, print out our welcome sign, uh, welcome message, and then the enter the first number. Let's just do 80, 80. 80 and the average is 80. Hooray! Okay, that worked. Uh, let's run it again. And let's try something that's maybe not as nice. 70, 23, and 95. And the average is 62. Now, in order to test what's actually happening here, because <clears throat> I'm, I'm just curious, I want to set it up in such a way that my average here, just to make this easier, let's just do uh, two numbers here. Num1, num2, and I'm just going to divide by 2. I'm going to set up in such a way that I expect my average to be a decimal. Right? So, let's try this now. Because it's not giving me an error, but I'm wondering if it's a decimal. What does it do? Because we're trying to say it's an int. So, in order to get a decimal, if I did 70 and 71, the average should be 70.5, right? And when I do this, yeah, okay. So the average is 70. So because we declare this as an integer, when we do this calculation, it says, hold on, you're trying to get a decimal value. I can't do that. So I believe what it does is it just truncates it. It says, I'm just going to get rid of all the decimals and say, here's your integer. So another option, um, if, we, if we want to deal with decimal values, the uh, common data type that we use is double. Okay, and let's try that now and see if that changes things. So 70 and 71, and we still get 70. Oh, I hate it when this happens. Okay, I'm going to pause and double check what's going on. I forget what happens here. Okay, so after my pause of the video and my little regroup, I was like, oh yeah, that's what happens. So I just had a little uh, brain lapse there for a second. And this is actually a little intricate. It's a little bit interesting. It's because num1 and num2 are integers. When you do mathematical operations with integers, so when you have an integer plus an integer, the result will be an integer. And then we take this integer and we divide it by an integer. So by default, when we do an integer divided by an integer, the result is an integer. So even though we're saying this variable is storing a, uh, can, can store a double, the result of this calculation, because we're working with integers, means that it's going to be an integer result. So that's why we're getting that 70. It, it loses the decimal place in the calculation itself. Okay? So but before we, we fix it, I just wanted to also show you... Um, because we want these to be integers, I just wanted to double check if I tried doing, there we go, if we tried doing a decimal, it's saying, hey, I'm trying to convert this to an integer. Uh, it doesn't work, right? Input string was not in a correct, sorry, this was too big here. It was not in a correct format. So that's the problem with that. And there are ways you can deal with it, but I'm not going to deal with it right now. Okay. Sorry, what happened to my stuff here? Oh yeah, and then it's saying, oh, what's going on? It stopped working just so you can close the program and it should shut down here. I just hit enter. Okay, so anyway, to fix the problem with not having the decimals is if we don't want to just do integers, we should change the inputs here as well to doubles. Um, and then we can enter decimal values and then this will be a double plus a double divided by the int there, but the double divided by the int will still result in a double. So we're okay. I believe. Let's check this out. .NET run. Do our 70 and our 71. And there we go, the 70.5. Because our, our variables there were doubles, it keeps that precision, keeps the decimals. 
Okay, and we should now be able to enter decimal values too, right? So 20.5. Oh, what did I do wrong? Close the program. Okay, that's weird. Um, input string was not in the correct format. Yes, it is. It's confused. Or I'm confused. This is like the worst video ever. <laughs> Although sometimes seeing uh, the different problems here is fine too. Uh, 70.5. See, and I expected it to do something different. Oh, duh. I have to read the error message. Um, it's actually showing this convert.int32, right? So we're, we're trying, we changed the, the storing of doubles, but we really need to not convert it to an integer. <laughs> um, we want to change that to convert.2 double. That makes sense. Okay, and then same here as well to double. So C sharp error messages, read them, right? It helps and we can understand that. Oh yeah, right, a double, I need to convert it to a double. Yay. Okay, just hit enter to clear that. Dot net run. I think we're good now. Let's find out. 23.4. Yay. 97.3 and our average is 60 point blah 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 blah. And I'm sure there's a way we can round this, but don't worry about it for now. Um, Actually, I just want to type math dot round. See, look at that. Round the decimal value to the nearest integral value, etc. So you can Google that and see what it does. But I don't. I'm not too worried about it. I don't mind the decimals. Okay, that's it for this video. Hopefully, you learned something. This should get you going for making any kind of calculator you want. Right? Get the input from the user. Do your calculation. Output the result. Biggest thing here is that uh, when you do your read line, it returns a string. So you can convert it to int, right, to int32 and have int data types, or convert it to double if you want to deal with decimal values, and you can have that. Okay, hope that made sense. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video.